Hi guys, uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. So, uh, so I'm uh, Dimitri Kamsing, I'm Associate Technical Lead in WSO2. And here with me today, joining uh, Charu Karwana, he's a software engineer with WSO2. So, uh, so we are in the uh, streaming integrated team. So, uh, so I hope everyone can see my slide deck. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, uh, go ahead with the uh, slide deck and then we will uh, uh, jump onto the uh, demo so uh, so the so agenda here today is to uh, give you a brief introduction about streaming integrator and its uh, high level capabilities and then mainly uh, focus on the developer aspect of the uh, streaming integrator so that uh, you can identify what are the capabilities or the functionalities provided by streaming integrator uh, tooling uh, to develop and then deploy your uh, streaming applications. So, uh, so I'll give you a brief introduction about the uh, streaming integrator. So WSO2 uh, streaming integrator uh, uh, is, a, is a specialized for uh, 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 process uh, streaming uh, data and also it also specialized in uh, integration space so so it's basically like user to integrate with various historical uh, sources uh, and uh, and then take actions based on it so 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 if i go to the next slide the so so this is the high level picture of the capabilities that streaming integrator provides so so basically in streaming integrator we have so concept of sources that is the the, the the functionality to get the data into the system so for that we have a lot of inbuilt uh, sources uh, uh, available so so basically like uh, kafka rdbms file etc so so you can basically connect to any uh, data source uh outside and uh, read those data and get those data into the streaming integrator so so it has a cap so as shown here so it has a capability to, to integrate with the messaging systems uh, cloud database files right so then once you get the data into the system right so you can do various transforms enrichments cleansing uh stuff so so basically the streaming integrator mainly depend on uh, our uh, 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 query language so so that is the core language we use underneath to write your uh, insights so so basically it's a sql like language so so it's so it's pretty easy to learn and uh, uh, understand it so so using this cd uh, language you can write queries to enrich uh, or cleanse transform those data into a meaningful ones and then also do some aggregation so we have the capability to do uh, 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 real time aggregations so, so so it's real time you can do the uh, like minutely hourly daily aggregations then uh, so so likewise you using the uh, cdq way you can do that so once you have all the uh, meaningful events uh, 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 meaningful events created by cd then you can again define the output sources which those insight need to be need to go to so so you can define you can uh, define the stream to which will alert the uh, email or again go to a database or go to any other uh, processing system likewise and also uh, when it comes to uh, streaming integrator, so we have another product called micro integrator, which also uh, specializes in uh, integration space. So you can read uh, about it, the micro integrator. So so we have a capability to seamlessly integrate with the micro integrator as well. So so basically, when when some insights are derived, you can connect with the micro integrator and do some pipeline there and uh, leverage that as well. So this is the basic idea of the streaming integrator, uh, the capabilities. Are. So, um, so the so the so with 
with streaming integrator so um, so we have so we are providing two distributions so one is the server that is streaming integrator and the streaming integrator tool so as i mentioned about so you can write a lot of cd queries to uh to, or the, the the construct to uh, retrieve data into the system and do the transformation and then send the data outside so to all those stuff you we are using the cd language and with the the tooling uh with the tooling uh product what we have given you is the funds the capabilities to ease that effort so basically so 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 i will show you a step by step uh, uh guide on the demo uh that how to uh from the scratch create a uh, complex uh, uh, app, uh, use case and then uh, how to leverage the functionalities in the uh, streaming integrator tool so if you go to the uh, the sum of the capabilities right so basically the, the streaming integrator tooling provides the uh, uh, one tool which help you to develop test and then create the deployable artifact so that you can deploy them where necessary right so um so also it's quite the uh, rich uh developer friendly functionality to create edit and test streaming applications and we have the uh, table so if you prefer typing the streaming uh ql in the source view we have the uh cable for that and also if you prefer uh, design you like a, a drag and drop capability then we have the source view for that uh, the design you as for that as well so 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 once you have all the uh, uh, streaming application deployed so so we are we, so we have provided cable to into the tooling which provide uh, the functionality for deployment as well. so so it may be like you need to so what so in your uh, developers uh, they do all the uh, streaming uh, application creation in your dev environment and you test it out and then once you are done with once you are okay with the application so with the tooling so let's say you have a product uh, like a test server running on the uh, environment so you can use the tool to deploy to that server whatever is the application you create so you don't need to manually go and copy uh, into that server's uh, file system so and also uh, so let's say if you have a docker or kubernetes environment so we have the separate uh, uh, tooling uh, functionalities to create those separate artifacts so it just you need to uh, deploy it there so it, it will from scratch create the see the applications necessary configurations or the runtime artifacts and we will give you the uh, uh, the, the deployment uh, uh artifacts so that you can deploy to a kubernetes so local environment so now uh, we will move into the demo so so i will uh, so i will so to the, the use case so i will explain the use case a little bit and then i will sh show you how to do that in the tool so uh so 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 before that so if you can see so this is my terminal so this is the si tooling pack so you can start the tooling pack using uh, this tooling sh okay. so then you will see that it just started on this url so you can navigate to that uh, url so i have already read that so this is the um, basic uh, uh, the, the, the landing page of the editor so the so so let me uh, just uh, uh, show you some of the uh, components here and then i will drive into the uh, use case so um, so uh, so we have this so this is the welcome page so you can create a new one or create open existing one and also we have a set of samples so let's say so this hello kafka so you can click it and uh, go to that sample so so you can read all the instructions here how to run this sample right so uh, and then you can run this uh, run the, this sample so this will basically uh, consume some some kafka topic and publish to different kafka topics so likewise we have several uh, uh, several samples you can also search from here as well so you can go to our documentation which has the uh, which will show you what are the samples we have so you can write out here 
without copying anything. So, uh, so then, uh, so we have, uh, so in the tools section, we are, so we have separate tools for different, different uh, functions. So the file is going is the, just to show you, so if you create a new file, it will show you what are the files here. And uh, the extension installer, so this extension install is the, the, the latest, so, so, right. So, so we have released the latest 101 uh, distribution for tooling. So in the latest release, what we have added this uh, uh, new feature called extension installer. So this basically what it does is, so, so if you have some experience in uh, using CD applications and uh, uh, stuff, so you know, when it comes to uh, some of the CD applications, like let's say you are creating a rec, you are going to connect to a RabbitMQ or Kafka or some RD admin, there are some, uh, external libraries you need to use. So, so basically in our earlier uh, uh, instruction was to download them separately and put it into the product form uh, lib and then restart the server. But uh, with this uh, new feature, now you can install it here without having to download it separately and do that manually. So you can uh, just search what is the, uh, the, the 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 extension or the uh, the support you need, and then you can just click install and we'll do the installation. So you just have to restart the server. Then uh, we have the event simulation capability. So the event simulation. So I will I will uh, show you uh, the, the 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 functionality of that. So event simulator basically use to uh, test your CD application. So basically, let's say you written a CD application which need to connect to a HTTP source. So you need, so you are getting the data from some HTTP source and you are doing some logic in the CDI. Now, in order to test whether your logic is correct, so basically you need to connect to HTTP source. So basically you need HTTP client and all. But without doing that, you can use the event simulator. Here. So event simulator basically remove that uh, source path so let's say so 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 when it comes to a CD application, the basic construct or the schema of the CD application is a stream. So you need to define a stream in order to uh, get. So let's say you are going to uh, get data for one uh, stream A and uh, from HTTP. So you need to first define the stream first. So stream means uh, what is the name of the stream and what are the attributes it has. So so then you bind a HTTP source for that. So then, so then if you send data to the HTTP source, it will come to the stream. So, so without, so, so without having to send the data to HTTP, you can use this event simulator, which directly send data to that stream, so that you don't have to send it through uh, HTTP. So this will be very handy when it comes to, let's say you have a Kafka source or stuff, so you don't have to configure those yet. So in order to test your functionality. So like that. So so we have the console here. So it will just uh, just show the uh, terminal log in here as well. And the sample event generator. This sample event generator is uh, used for a uh, purpose of let's say now if I take the my earlier explanation. So uh, if it is a HTTP source now uh, now you have defined the stream stream name, and uh, so you need to get the uh, data to send it. So basically, in a payload, you need to send the body of the what is the values you are going to send. So in in with this tool, you can select what is the CDF, what is the stream name, and then what is the format you need that data, and then you can generate it. So then you can just copy paste this one into a HTTP client and then just use it. So I will show that as well. So uh, so we have this on-demand query as well. So this is basically so if you have a um, so if you have a uh, RDMS table or anything defined in your CD application, right? So so we have a concept called store query. Store query means in CD language we, you can uh, use stores annotation to define any table. So it can be in memory table or in your RDMS table, etc. So so you can use this uh, tool uh, the, the on demand query which, so you don't need to again go to the database server and check what are the values. So you can just write a store query 
and then retrieve the data and see whether the values are in the database or what are the values exist and also we have a something called tour guide so this is this tour guide is basically gives you a so if you click that so this will basically guide you to, uh, to the, uh, the the editor regarding the functionalities it has so it will ask you to create a stream and so you can try it out as well okay so 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 now let's go to the so if so th that is the functionality and also uh, so tools so that is the deploy to server function that i have mentioned and this is the export function where you can export to a docker or kubernetes so we will show that as well. okay so 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 in the use case we are going to uh, just uh, hypothetically uh, create a, a, a factory called a sweet production factory right so it has a, a, a like raw material stream and uh, sweet production stream and also uh, so uh, those two streams will get data from some from HCTP source and we will show you how to test it out using event simulator and etc and then once you get events into raw event stream so we will uh, use a uh, store uh, type uh, my uh, using rdbms store which will connect to mysql and dump that data into a database and then we will do another query which which so we have a in cd we have a construct called triggers so that means uh, if we want to trigger something let's say hourly minutely or daily you can write a trigger so that it will run it so uh, kind of a con job so so you can define that trigger so once that trigger runs so this will join with that database and get whatever the data and send that send so send out a report so let's say you need a weekly report of what are the uh, raw materials in the database so likewise so that is a that is a, a use cases we came up with for this demo okay so i'm going to create a new uh seed the app first so let's call this uh, uh sweet factory analytics and you can save it so now you can see it is saved here okay. so then let's say now as I mentioned, I'm going to define a stream for raw material stream. So let's define that. So you can see in the tool, if you if you prefer using the source view, so in the CD language, we have the construct to create stream. So you don't have to write everything by hand. So we have the code completion, etc. So you can select define stream. So we'll give a name, say, raw material stream. And then we have to give the attributes, the say name, and you can see the the data type would be string and uh, amount double. Okay, so you can save it. So if you go to design view, so you can see. So this is the design view. So so we have the available constructs here: sources, things, tables, etc and uh, so this so uh, as i created the stream from a source if you move over to design view, it will be transformed into the corresponding design view elements so now we have a raw materials so now i will show you how to uh, drag and drop a source and uh, how to bind the http source to this stream so that i can get the data to raw materials stream from http form so um so for that, so you can uh, drag and drop the source. Right? So you first connect it, and then you go to. So you see, if you hover it, you will see that it is incomplete. So you go to design uh, the form, form, compose, uh, edit component, and you select what is the source I want. So these are the available inbuilt sources we have. So we have a lot of them. Okay? So I'm going to here choose HTTP, and also I'm going to give a URL. So so once I call that URL, so this stream will get hit. Okay. So, uh, so let's say it is uh, so material stream, and also the the mapping. Mapping means right whether I'm sending the data in a JSON, CSV, JSON or uh, uh, XML or etc. So you can select what are the mapping you need. These are the available mappings we have. We have Avro binary csv json p value etc 
So I'm going to use the ASM here. So that's it. So I'm not going to, so others, so, so others will be by default will appear. And I'm going to sum. Right? So if you go to the source view, so you can see the new source is created with the string. So shall, again, shall we go to the design view? And then, um, so now we have a source. Now let's say I want to uh, test it out whether I will be getting the data to this raw material stream. So, so in order to test it, the best way, the, the recommended way is to have a log scene. So as sources, we have scenes as well. So you can drag and drop a scene and you can connect that and you go to the edit. So these are, so these are the scenes we have. So we have email, file, DR, PC, etc. So again, so here I'm going to select uh, log and let's give a prefix. So this prefix, so this log means it will log on to the server console. So whatever the, if, if an event is given to the raw material stream. So I, I'm going to give a, a prefix, let's say uh, log material. So now we have seen, so whatever event comes to raw material will be logged into this uh, screen. Okay, so let's go to the source screen. So now you can see the same property also added to the raw material screen, right? So in order to test this, so we can use the event simulator as I mentioned. So you go to the, so in this simulation, we have two options. One is single simulation, second is the feed simulation. So single simulation means you can select a particular stream in a particular CDF and just send the events one by one. So uh, the other option is the feed. Feed means, if, let's say you want to test out a scenario with a, where uh, when you need to send like uh, 10 or 50 events, right? So, so you can't just use the single simulation to send one by one 50 times. So without doing that, you can do a feed simulation where you can define a csv file or csv file with some value so you can uh, tell that feed simulation i'm going to use this csv file so that so then feed simulation will read that csv and send that data to this raw material screen. also there are other options like let's say you have a database table and you need to read that table and get the data so that you can test it out. that also you can do using feed simulation so for now i'm going to use single simulation I'm going to select this seed factory, my seed there, and the story. And you can give, let's say, uh, uh, cloud. And let's say, yeah. So you can, so, we, so before doing anything, so you need to start the seed there. So, 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 with, so after starting only, you need to do the uh, event simulation. So you can see if we start the successfully right so you can send the event so now you see i send the flow and flower and three as values so you can see we have received the event for this prefix and the values are flower and three so likewise you can uh, so you can define the so let's say from this stream you are doing some other stuff let's say you are you are written a, a complex logic so you need to test it out so you can use the same method to do that without having to connect to HTTP uh, uh, client to send the data. And also I'm going to uh, uh, show how to do a custom mapping. So that means, uh, so let's say, uh, so so in CD, so, so when, now here I define a HTTP source with a JSON. So, so if you are going to send data to this uh, stream using HTTP source, so you need a payload, right? So in our uh, implementation, so we have we are expect so you know, the, the 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 format of the payload can be uh, so in your client client systems, so you can have various different formats of of a, you know, since I'm uh, accepting JSON, so that JSON can be very complex, and you need to retrieve data from that and put it into this stream, or it can be default mapping. So default mapping means now I mentioned we can I mentioned we can generate payload for 
uh, uh, streams so that we can send it out using HTTP. So, so, so what you can do is you can, in order to generate that uh, payload, so you can go to the sample event generator, you can select the CPR, select the stream, and you select what is the format I need, and generate. So this will generate a sample event, so you can just copy paste it to your HTTP client, and you can test it out. So that is one of the KPDs we are provided. Okay, so now let's go to the uh, design view okay? again. Right. So here I'm going to create another stream. Now let's see how to do that in the design. So we drag and drop a stream. And I'm going to call this uh, feed production stream. And I'm going to give some value for that name. And let's say uh, amount as well. A, B, like that right and you can submit so now i have a seed production stream and then um, so i'm going to again attach it to the source here right? so let's select again the http and let's give a url Okay, and also I'm going to take it later. And also, so here I'm just, just going to show you how to do a custom matching. That means, now let's say you have a, a, a different schema of a JSON. So how do you map that to this, uh, this tree? So let's say, so I will just add this. Uh, so, so I'm going to here, I'm going to give the JSON path. Let's say there's a, something called item, right? Hold ID and again uh, item. Hmm. Okay. So, so, so that means if if, a, if someone send a payload with some JSON with uh, a name uh, with a parent attribute item and with a child C as ID, so it will be mapped to the the value of that will match to the name, same as to the amount. So you can submit that. Okay. So again, I'm going to uh, add a thing. So I know, so I can take the values are filtered. Okay, so then, um, so, so if you go to the source tree, now you see the all the values are appended correctly. Yeah. Um, so now, now let's now let's try to send some data to this suite production. Is that since I have configured it using custom. So here now I'm going to use the HTTP client. So, so here I have used the HTTP client, right? So, and the content type is JSON. And this is the custom mapping now you have. So, you have the item, ID, and number. So, what in the custom mapping, what I have told, what we have told you get the item.id and add it to the name as well. Uh, name as well. And the uh, amount attribute get get the amount one. Okay, so you just start it. So you can see how the values have come to this. Okay. So 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 that is basically how to test out your uh, CD application. So you can have the so using these streams you can have a lot of complex logic written. So with this uh, event simulator and uh, uh, other testing mechanisms, we can test out here to investigate. So again, uh, let's go to the design view. So, uh, so next I'm going to uh, show you how to write a uh, query. Now let's say now we have the streams, right? Now we have the streams. Um, 
So we have the streams here. Now I need to do some uh, uh, some meaningful event. I want to generate some meaningful event. Let's say an alert. So alert means now let, I want to let's say uh, uh, using the seed production stream, I want to uh, 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 like calculate the hourly total, and if it is less than a certain some value, I want to send an alert saying that production of this particular item is low for that for that hour. So how can you do that? So so using the design view, so what you can do is so you can um, so, so so rather I will show you how to do the source view. So so let's say I'm going so so that I can show you what are the tables in source view as well. So you can say uh, define uh, so you can use the stream first from so you can see that all the available streams are listed in, and then you are going to add a window here okay. now let's say it's one hour hypothetically okay. and um, then i'm going to select name and sum so we have some inbuilt functions so you can check for now cd doc so some average etc and then you can say the amount and say hourly total right then i'm going to group by the product name then i'm going to give a filter let's say having um, hourly total if it is less than 5,000, I want to do some uh, big given alert. So let's put it to another new screen. So likewise, so you can uh, generate, uh, so you can write the, 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 the the, 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 the rules and the etc using CD language using this source. So also we have the uh, this uh, 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 descriptions as well, so you can see what are the available stuff. So but in the design view, it will be uh, shown with uh, proper uh, use experience. So uh, so like that. So so so. so so if you go to the design view now, so you can see from the CD production scene, we have created a query, and in that the output of that is for put into low production suite, low production and that suite. So 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 that is basically how you can uh, uh, use the source and design view to write your uh, or build up your CDP. So I'm going to uh, uh, pass it to uh, Charko, so he will also uh, explain some of other capabilities of the uh streaming indicator tooling um so and also the our deployment options so, so over to you Tom. thank you damit uh i will share my screen now uh so you can see that uh, this is the app we have already created and uh, i'm what i'm going to show you is uh how to uh, generate and consume uh, consume events from a http source and save it in a cd table and uh, generate a report from it uh, all in the design view so if you move on to the design view uh, we can see that uh, this is the one that we have already defined uh, let me move this part so i'm going to use the raw material stream here and save that uh, data that has come in into to the uh, raw material stream into a cd table and uh, generate a report from it so okay for to in order to add a cd table you have to uh, check on the components that are available and under collections there's tables so if you add the table and uh, go to configure uh, configuration form uh, you can give it a name 
uh, I'm going to call it uh, latest shipment details and I'm going to, I have to define the attributes which are in, uh, available in the table that means columns name and I'm going to add another amount which is double so uh, the store type uh, CD supports different kinds of store types uh, mainly in memory RDBMS Redis Cassandra we can uh, for this uh, demonstration purpose I'm going to use RDBMS I'm going to connect, connect this table to an RDBMS store uh, when you select the RDBMS table you will see that uh, uh, the form will show you uh, different methods of uh, configuring your data, database uh, one, one way is uh, using inline configurations where you can define your JDBC URL username and password all in inline with in the source sweep and the other way method is to uh, uh, define it in our uh, editor runtime deployment camera uh, using this data source name so so I'm going to uh, use that uh, in this case uh, and I'm going to call my uh, data source name and uh, as suite production DB uh, and uh, I will tell you uh, show you how to uh, define the uh, suite production DB data source in the deployment demo, uh, once the configuration of the table is uh, finished so the next one is I'm going to uh, set a primary key for this table uh, that is going to be name and I'm going to index that uh, table with the column amount and I'm going to submit that okay so once you submit that you can see the latest shipment details uh, table it has been created in here and next is to uh, how to uh, send data from a uh, raw material stream uh, and save it in the latest shipment details table so to do that uh, we are going to use we, are, we have to use a query a projection query uh, when you go to uh, our components under query section you can see the projection uh, query and before uh, configuring the query you have to wire the uh, inputs and outputs of the uh, for the query so first time going the input stream will come from the uh, raw material stream and the output stream will uh, feed the data into the data shipment details now we can uh, uh, create the uh, query so I'm going to uh, name this query as RDBMS say query uh, this is not uh, a yeah, required but uh, I think it's important to identify uh, in design view so RDBMS save query so from we are consuming events from the raw material stream and here we have to uh, select uh, what type of what are the attributes we are selecting from the raw material stream so I'm going to go you can use use the defined attributes or I, you can select all attributes in this case I'm going to select all attributes and the next one is to uh, how to uh, update the table so you can directly insert the, the operation insert directly insert or uh, I am going to select in this case update or insert into so you can set the condition for the uh, in update or insert into a query as as this uh, I'm going to uh, date so what it will do is uh, when a date uh, when a event comes uh, it will search for a name uh, with a similar name uh, it search for a data uh, which has a similar name and uh, either if it if it found it will update the value it has or it will uh, insert the uh, data into the table so I'm going to submit that. So if you go back to the source view, you can see that uh, with the table has been created and the uh, we are, the query also have been created. Uh, now it is to uh, save it and uh, 
uh, connect it to the database and uh, simulate and uh, check test the, the, whether this has whether this is working. So in order to do that, uh, first uh, we will have to install the uh, dependencies uh, that is required because we are using an RDBMS data source in this case. So uh, for that, I'm going to use the extension installer. I'm going to search for the RDBMS. Uh, MySQL data source and extension, and I'm going to install that. Install. It will take some time. And Yes, uh, so the extension installation has been successful. Now it is prompting for restart. And uh, while it's, while, when I'm restarting, I will also show you uh, how to configure the data source. So uh, this is the server, uh, the tooling, uh, SI tooling home folder. I'm in, the, uh, I'm in, uh, I'm in this directory and I'm going to uh, edit the data source in which is situated in the conf server deployment yaml so when you open the deployment yaml you need to find, go to find the uh, date in the section called wso2.data sources so once you found it you have to add these are different data sources that we have added already for the uh, in the for the distribution and we are going to add another one. Uh, this will be the suite production DB, and I will explain the uh, sections shortly. So we are adding this uh, suite production DB under. So it is important to uh, check whether the uh, indentations are properly aligned. Uh, because this uh, YAML is uh, okay, and you have I need to this will be uh, for the testing purposes. I will be using uh, my locally installed as uh, my SQL server, so it will be situated in three zero six. It will connect to and. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, next is to uh, go back and restart the server. So as you can see, uh, we have restarted the server, and if we go back. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, use this feed simulation as Damit mentioned in uh, in his introduction uh, there are two ways to uh, pop uh, like uh, test a uh, stream using uh, simulations so one uh, the next met the method I'm going to use is the feed simulation uh, for this purpose I'm uh, I'm going to use the CSV as my uh, simulation source so i'm going to uh, you can give a simulation name i'm going to leave it as that and uh, i'm going to uh, set the uh, simulation source as csv file uh, you can give it a database or we can also use uh, random values to values generate random values and uh, feed uh, use the, use that to simulate the uh, stream as well so uh, i'm going to uh, select the cd up here and select the stream name you want to uh, simulate it's raw material stream and you have to upload the csv file that you are going to use as the source so my the csv file i'm going to use is switch uh, so once it's uploaded and saved uh, it will take a second and it will appear in this way Yes, and uh, like uh, Damit mentioned, uh, first you have to uh, start the application and 
see it's, it has started and i'm going to use the feed simulation to send events you can see that uh, log uh, raw materials are has been are being uh, inserted into the uh, event sync through the log uh, log sync that we have used and uh, if we can go back to go to the mysql tables uh, we can see that uh, the, the latest shipment details table is getting updated uh, with new values all every time right so next is to uh, let me stop this simulation and there and next is to uh, go back to design view to uh, create a uh, simulated join stream scenario using uh, our uh, our table so this is to generate the reports uh, report so uh, in order to generate a report uh, you need to uh, you need a way to create a stream out of the uh, table so in the what how we can do is uh, uh, use a trigger stream to uh, query from the table so you can use a uh, trigger stream and configure it as report trigger stream and uh, this is to uh, specify the trigger criteria and this would be you can specify to uh, trigger it at the start of the application or as a cron expression or as a uh, once every five minutes or so for the ease of uh, demonstration i use 20 seconds so and once it's configured now it's uh, now we have to use uh, how to uh, use that to trigger and uh, query data from the latest shipment details to do that uh, we need a uh, join queries uh, a join query how join query works is uh, you will get uh, two streams uh, i mean a stream and a table and combine those two and uh, generate another stream using both of those data so in order to uh, use join query you need three things uh, uh, first uh, a first and a two input streams and an output output streams so i'm going to uh, create the output stream as uh, report stream and the attributes should be name and second attribute will be amount and it will be double so uh, to, uh before can like similar to queries uh, before you are uh, going to configure uh, join query you need to wire the join query first uh, so this will be the input streams and this is the output stream then let's configure the join query so the join join query is the join so uh, when you if you when you go to the form view uh, you can see that uh, the left input is the uh, latest shipment details and the right uh, the join type is going to be like these are the uh, join types that which are uh, supported by Siddhi and uh, here we are going to use the join uh, normal join and the right output is report trigger stream so you can rename uh, these streams as uh, to ease of use as I'm going to use uh, data shipment details as LSD so and once it's done uh, you can select uh, what are the attributes that are going to be present in the output stream. So I'm going to use uh, user defined attributes. For, for the name, I'm going to use uh, lsd.name because uh, this we are going to query from the table and for the amount, I'm going to use lsd.amount. So this is just uh, going to be an insert operation and I'm going to submit. So the report stream is uh, configured, and now it is now it is to uh, view it uh, like uh, 
send the report to an output sync. So in this case, I'm going to select uh, the sync and you have to first wire them up. Then I'm going to configure uh, what's that sync type. Uh, you can send this report as an email. You can send this, uh, re write this uh, report to a file. And uh, here I'm going to, for the uh, ease of use, uh, I'm going to use log. So, and for the prefix, I'm going to use report stream log. So, we have configured that. Now let's move on to source view and we can save it. And once we run it, uh, this should uh, generate a, a report every 20 seconds and it should be uh, printed in the, using the report string uh, here using this uh, log. Let's uh, test this out. Let me check that. Uh, stop it and do it. That's fine. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, start. Okay, okay, let's start. Uh, and you can see, uh, we just wait for 20 seconds. Uh, this should. So, as you can see, uh, it is generating the report and it is being printed in the sync log. So uh, now we have defined all our output uh, log and the uh, uh, input uh, streams. Uh, now it's time to deploy it in a uh, running uh, streaming integrator environment. So there are mainly three ways uh, as Damit mentioned. Uh, one way is to uh, deploy it in the server and uh, uh, you can select the CD app you want to deploy here and you can define the host, the port and the username password for the server and you can uh, deploy it in the server as uh, this could be a virtual machine or a, a Docker container. So also there's another way of exporting uh, these applications. One way is uh, creating, exporting it as a Docker file or you can push it to Docker Hub as a Docker image. Uh, the next method is uh, you can export it, you uh, export Kubernetes artifacts as, uh, as export the CD application as Kubernetes artifacts and then deploy it in, in a Kubernetes cluster. So in this case, I'm going to use uh, Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes export feature. So I'm going to select the suite Factory analytics CD. Uh, okay. Before doing that, uh, let's say uh, you uh, you want uh, to do uh, like a sort of parameterization. Uh, say uh, it's not uh, every time when you are using uh, the uh, the application in a, a dev environment and a production environment, you may need to change the data source which you are using. So our editor has the uh, capability to parameterize uh, different different uh, places in our uh, CD app. So one way is uh, you can parameterize the data source. As data source name. So when you uh, parameterize this uh, and save it, you will be prompted that uh, no system or environmental variable found for data source name. Uh, this is, you can be set, you can set this using uh, here, uh, suite production DB. And once you have set it, it will be saved, right? And you can go, now you can, we can proceed with the Kubernetes export.
So uh, we are going to uh, use the suite production factory analytics DB. Uh, like similar to what I have uh, in this step, we are going we are like uh, templating CD apps. Like previously, I have done it in the editor. In this case, even if you want to like change some, say uh, another variable, I am going to use the uh, condition that we have we have been using to feed data into the low production alert stream. I'm going to pal parameterize this as filter. Well, so uh, I'm going to uh, move on to the next step. Uh, next step is to uh, add a different uh, if you want to make amends to the deployment YAML of the streaming integrator, you can do it in here. So in this case, we are going. We need to add a data source. So this is the uh, basic uh, template for a data source, and I'll add the required data source from uh, Canvas. So. So I will explain the data sources that I have added. Uh, so these are the uh, this is the suite production DB, uh, which is uh, which will be we will be using in the when we are deploying in the Kubernetes environment. Uh, it's uh, it has a MySQL. Its host name is MySQL DB, and the port should be 3306, and the username and the password. Uh, this is for the WSO2 metrics DB. Uh, this data source is used for uh, metrics uh, uh, to uh, uh, save metric metric data in the SI server. Uh, why we are adding this uh, as a data source is uh, every time when you are uh, adding the data source, uh, changing the data sources here, it will get uh, replaced. Uh, it will replace all the data sources which are already defined and. Def uh, they are by default, so you need to add the ones that uh, that are already present and important for the functionality in or in the in this section. So we are going to move on to the next section, and this is the uh, populate template arguments. As you can see, I have uh, we have uh, templated the data source name, and we have another new one uh, which is filter. Web. I'm going to change it as 500. So the next step is to select a Docker image. Uh, you have you can you have the option to build a custom Docker images image with extensions and artifacts. Also, or you can use an existing Docker image. Uh, I'm going to use to build custom Docker image with extensions and artifacts. So the next step is to select the additional libraries which are required. So in previous step, uh, we used. Uh, extension installer to uh, install the mysql uh, uh, related dependencies so i'm going to uh, add mysql connector as this as this would need uh, require to uh, connect to the database so this is to uh, push the docker image to the docker registry so when we are deploying the kubernetes it will fetch the uh, docker image which we have uh, pushed to the docker so I'm going to push. Uh, and once I have defined that, I'm going to move and I'm going to export. So when you export, uh, it will uh, in the uh, editor terminal. You will see that uh, it uh, the step by step uh, it gets deployed to the uh, Docker uh, Docker Hub. You have to wait for the success message. Okay, uh, so the Docker image has been pushed successfully, and uh, I've, uh, we have downloaded uh, the Suite Factory uh, Kubernetes artifacts, and I'm going to uh, copy this to my working directory right now. Uh,
and uh, unzip them. So uh, I have been uh, I have uh, set up set up a, a minikube uh, Kubernetes cluster in my local machine, and I also have in uh, in it I have deployed a MySQL uh, database server now with the host name MySQL DB. So I will uh, go to the directory. So uh, you can see the Kubernetes artifacts that we have. Uh, uh, downloaded. So I will explain uh, what are the what are the files of the while what are the files that are required for the uh, deployment and uh, what are the purposes. So the K prerequisites as in uh, this is uh, this file will be used to configure the uh, uh, the account names and all those uh, stuff to for the CP operator to work. So then the CD operator YAML will install the CD operator, which is a Kubernetes separator, uh, which will manage all the uh, communication routing and uh, uh, starting and uh, starting up of uh, CD applications. CD process dot YAML contains the our the created application, and let's uh, we will deploy them one by one. Uh, so so once you have a uh, uh, deployed CD operator. You have to uh, wait a couple of seconds until it uh, it starts up. Okay, now it's ready. And uh, you can uh, deploy the CD process dot uh, YAML uh, using CTA. So now it's getting a uh, now it's getting deployed uh, until this uh, this will take like a minute or two uh, until this is uh, this gets deployed i will explain uh, i will show you the docker file that we have exported with the uh, kubernetes artifacts uh, you can see that uh, we have defined uh, different arguments that we that are required for the uh, uh, docker container and you can uh, also define uh, you can also see the environment uh, the templated variables that we already defined in the uh, as here uh, if any time you want to change the uh, environment the templated variables you can use this to uh, build the build another docker image then push it to the docker hub so let's see that uh, with our diplomat is done so it's getting deployed. Okay, uh, so the sweet factory analytics is passing has been fast, fast. So it is now creating the uh, for for the application. Okay, so we have uh, deployed the CD Suite Factory Analytics application successful, and let's see the 
blocks. As you can see, uh, there's a CDF Pursuit Factory Analysis have been deployed successfully. So also, if you uh, go and uh, see the our describe the ingress for the CD operator, you can see that uh, the all the endpoints have been created, and you can do uh, you can use a curl operation to uh, send a post request and to uh, to send data to the different different streams that we have uh, created. So that's it for the, our presentation. Uh, uh, you can ask any questions that you have uh, if you have any. Okay. Uh, Um, okay, so uh, so one of the question is uh, so what can we expect new in the next release? So uh, so so we so we are planning to do a, a another release for the server and the tooling uh, in uh, like uh, coming uh, two three months time. So the, the, the so our main objective of for the tooling for the next release would be to make the tooling uh, more more developer friendly. Like so so and also align closely with our uh, integration uh, space. So basically, so we, so we are going to revamp the some of the uh, functionalities and also introduce the new ones so that uh, so 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 as so. So, so we need to so without having the user to figure out things so what our main objective is to guide the user to create the functionality so so, so that is our main objective for the next release so so we are going to do uh, a lot of uh, development on that one and uh, hopefully be able to uh, release that in next couple of months So, uh, so we have questions. So, SI support to trigger stored procedure from MS SQL. Uh, so, basically, so if you want, so for the SI, if you need uh, some, so if I understand that, so if, if you need to trigger some kind of a logic in uh, SI, so, so, uh, so if you need, uh, like, if let's say, so. If, so so we so we have support for CDC. So basically, if you have a MySQL table and you need to identify the what happening to that table, like inserts, deletes, and etc. So we have that support for MySQL. So whenever some change happen, so that triggers will uh, that trigger will uh, come to the SI. So upon that, you can do some logic. So uh, so so for the Trigger stored procedures. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, but from the MS SQL side, if you want to trigger some uh, some uh, trigger in the SI server, of course you can do using CDC. Okay, so I think we don't have any more questions. So if you have questions, please uh, uh, raise it uh, on our Slack channel. So I think Usma going to uh, 
uh, smile going to share it. Uh, okay, so so it's been shared on the chat. So so we have the Slack channel. Please raise your any questions, uh, any uh, concerns. So we will uh, gladly uh, uh, reply to them. So so please use that. So 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 thank you very much, guys, for uh, participating in this webinar. And um, uh, thanks.